Hi everyone, in this time lapse video I'm going to be showing you a border collie drawing I did in pastels. Now because this video is sped up you're going to be able to see just how many layers is required when drawing black and white fur. I think sometimes it's um, a very easy mistake to make that because we think of it as one colour it doesn't require as many layers but you'll see here that that is very you know it's just not the case. It requires just as much depth as anything else. So when I did this portrait, because it was over a year ago now, I wasn't using my pan pastels for my base layers. What I did for this method is I sanded down my soft pastel sticks. Now the soft pastel sticks that I use at that time was Rembrandt and they're still the one brand that I'm using. But now I incorporate those with my pan pastels. They do work in the same way. I do think you get slightly better coverage with your pan pastels. They do seem to last longer. But if you don't want to invest in the pan pastels quite just yet, but you do have some soft pastel sticks, I do really like the sanding them down. It's a little bit messier, but as long as you're careful with that, it works in the same way as you can see here. Once I've got my base layer down, I always just refine everything from there. I am only focusing on my lights and my darks. Now it's really important that you map those in in the right place. And the reason being, a highlight or a shadow on the dog or any animal's face is never in a random place. It's always there for a reason. So if you take above the eye, for example, with the highlight that I've just added there, that's indicating that it's the very top of the eye socket that joins onto the skull as it slopes back across the top of his head. So I have to make sure that I've got that highlight in the right place. Exactly the same with the shadows. Look at where the ear, the longer fur on the side of the face that I've just drawn, that shadow there is indicating that the ear is joining onto the side of the face. If that shadow is in a different position, it's going to make the ear look wrong. So all of these lights and darks are very important. They are following the underlying bone and muscular structure under the skin. So again, if we don't get those accurate, as I say, it won't resemble as much like that animal as it should in that reference photo. So I like to work in small sections. And if you've seen my other videos on YouTube, you'll know that that's how I tackle every portrait. I'm using my oval shaped soft tool there just to apply my base layer. And then I'm going in with my pastel pencils. Now I prefer to use a mixture of the brands, so I've got Carbofello, Pit Pastels, I've got the Derwen and also the Carandash. They're my four main brands. Now the one that I use the least out of those is the Carandash because they do have some hard nuggets in those pencils. They're incredibly frustrating sometimes to use and they're also the most expensive. So I do feel they shouldn't have those quality control issues. But they are the four brands that I do like to use on any portrait. And it depends what I'm drawing and the combination then of the pencils that I'm going to be using. Obviously, that's very subjective to that one portrait. But you'll notice here that I am using a black Rembrandt soft pastel stick to go over my very darkest colour to make sure that I've got my contrast right. Now, I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur. I'll link that in the description below if that's of interest. And one of those top tips is contrast. And that's not just when I'm drawing black fur. That is with anything. I want to make sure my shadows are dark and that my highlights are bright. That is going to make your portrait look more realistic than worrying about the exact colour. And on that video mentioned, which again, as I say, I'll link it below, I do have two photos of a portrait side by side, one with less contrast and the one with my actual portrait. And you can really see the difference there, just how important the contrast is. What I don't want to do is when I'm drawing black fur, I don't want that dark fur to look grey. It has to look like a black dog. So my main aim here, as you can see, is always to get my contrast right. Now I offer slower in-depth tutorials on Patreon, both in pastels and acrylics, and the contrast is something that I focus on regardless of the medium. But on both tiers, I have pet portraits and I also have a mixture of wildlife subjects as well. I do like to focus on the pet portraits so that Patreon members, when they are feeling confident to, they can then go into pet portraits themselves if that's something they would like to pursue. So I do have a variety of fur textures, different breeds, dog cats and horses, so that there are as many tips and techniques for a wide variety of domestic pets so they can then transfer those tips and techniques into their own work. So I do have a lot of tutorials there focusing on black and white fur because I do know it's one of those more challenging colours. So if my Patreon channel is of interest, I'll link that in the description below.
So onto this ear, as you can see, I'm really still just focusing on my shapes. Don't look at this as a dog's ear. Just think, okay, right, this is a longer shape that curves away from the face. And then there are a few lighter details in the middle, but I can see some of my shadows. Draw in your shadows first, get your mapped out process in initially, and then build your lighter mid-tones on top. My biggest tip is never draw in the lightest details first, regardless of whatever it is that you are drawing, unless you're working on something that's particularly light fur, like the yellow Labrador that I've got here as a tutorial on YouTube. That's the only time really that I'll be working from light to dark. But certainly when drawing black fur, I always want to be going the opposite way and starting with my dark base layers initially and then building up my subtle layers from there. What happens is if you put your lighter colours down first for your details, you then don't have anywhere else to go for your future layers. You've already put in your brightest highlight. So what will happen is the fur there will not have nowhere near as much depth as what's being created at the moment. And that's because I'm working with multiple layers, but they're subtle. Again, I'm not jumping to those brighter colours. So once I've got the top part of the face in, I usually then always draw in the nose and I start to work on the fur around it. As you can see now, I'm using the soft tool in a slightly different way. I'm holding it closer to the sponge because this fur, I need to get a bit more of those darker spots in place. I'm going to be using the soft tool more like how I hold my pencils. Again, it's just going to help with that control to make sure I've got that darker pigment where needed. One thing as well that I talk about so, like you know really in depth in my patreon tutorials is the refinement layer this is something that i really don't think should be skipped it makes a huge difference uh, one of the most common questions that i'm asked is why do my details look grainy when i'm working on pastel matte paper or any kind of textured paper and this is a great question and it's something that as i say i'm asked all the time and I don't get that look in my pastels. You can see that my details look nice and smooth, but the reason for that is I'm building up my layers. If you imagine pastel matte paper with that texture, it's got those bumps, it's got that grittier feel to it. If you just put one layer down and then jump straight into your details, you're not going to have those little, um, that little grainy, the little dip, the tooth of the paper filled in. Now, with that being said, you don't want to flood the tooth of the paper. It is really important to build that up gradually. But as you do so, and with each additional layer that you add, your details should start to look smoother. So if you're finding that they're looking grainy, it's usually a good indication that you don't have enough layers built up underneath. And this is also one of the reasons why on every single portrait that I do for a tutorial on Patreon, I focus on the layering process right from the very first base layer all the way to those final details, because it really is important. You know, if I'm doing a pet portrait here, as you can see, I may be put in I don't know, 10 to 12 layers on for every single element. Some fur textures aren't going to require quite as many layers, but you certainly want to be doing more than two or three. I will definitely do no less than five or six. So if you're spending an hour on a portrait and you feel like it's not as realistic or doesn't have the depth that you would like, it's probably because you're not putting enough layers in, which means you're not allowing enough time. Maybe just sit down and say right I'm going to spend five or six hours on this portrait rather than one and you will probably find then that you'll be forcing yourself to add more layers and therefore get more depth in your fur. So something else that I really focus on on videos here on YouTube and on Patreon is my fur length and fur direction. You can see on the bridge of the nose there that my pencil strokes are significantly shorter than the fur on the top of the head and by the ear. That there is showing that difference in texture. If I have my pencil strokes as long for the bridge of the nose and around the muzzle, then that fur is going to look like it's got really fluffy nose. And obviously I don't want that. I do have to show that variation in texture and that fur length. I also have a video here on YouTube and it's um, about how to draw shiny black fur. So if that's of interest, I'll also link that in the description below as well. And that's going to be very similar to how I layered everything here under the eye. I haven't forced too many bright highlights under the eye. Everything else that's lighter is above the eye. Again, it's just going to really depend on that light source of that reference photo.
So when I'm working on the gum area here, notice again how I'm building up from dark to light. I've put in those darker shapes first and then I'm building up my mid-tones and finally then my highlights. So any surface that's wet, like the eyelid, the nose and the gum area, the one main thing that's going to make that look wet in the portrait is your brightest white highlights. So if you notice on the gum area, for instance, that there are some white lines or some little white dots, do make sure to add those in. Now, if they're particularly bright, it's a good idea to add those in first rather than on top of your black colour, just because you might not be able to get that as bright as you may want you know, as you intended. So if you do see something that's particularly bright, just like a highlight in the eye, and you wanna make sure that you preserve that white color, then just put that in first and then map your darker colors around it. So I'm gradually working my way down towards the white fur of the chest. Now I do have quite a few videos here on YouTube that show different types of white fur and different textures. I've got a bulldog here and I do really show that there is a very different layering process for something like that and it's all going to vary depending on the light source. So if you've got um, a photograph where the white fur is very overexposed and potentially looks really bright, you may then want to work from light to dark. The reason being, if you put down too much of a darker grey base layer, as I have done in some of these areas, you won't then be able to go as bright as if you put the white down first, just like what I've mentioned with the highlights on the eye and the gum. So again, white fur is going to be one of those things that's very subjective to the photo that I am working from, whereas black fur, I always work from dark to light. And this is why, again, I've got a few tutorials on Patreon focusing on white fur so that I can really show the different approaches depending on the type of light source that you might have in your reference photo. So one other thing as well that I do regardless of any colour of the fur is I don't put one solid colour down everywhere. You'll notice that even when I was working on the white section of the chest that there were many greyer tones mixed in there are always that subtle variation between your lights and your darks. You are certainly gonna have that a little bit more exaggerated with a longer coated breed like this Border Collie because where that longer fur is clumped together and overlap in some areas, you're gonna have more shadows. So do make sure that any subtle variation, any change between greys, darks and lights that you do get those in. If you would like to see the tutorials that I have available on Patreon before you sign up, I do have a Patreon library on my website and I'll link that in the description below. So that's got all of the tutorials there for the pastel and the acrylic tier and I do have a combined tier for those of you like me who like to work in both mediums. And the wonderful thing about Patreon is it's so flexible. You can stay for as long as you want but you can cancel at any time as well. Once I'd finished with the white fur here, I'm then just going to work on my final details on the face and then add my whiskers. Now the whiskers are the last element to go on just because I want to make sure that I've got all the fur finished behind it so that then I don't have to draw around the whiskers. It's something that can really extend the drawing process so I would always recommend to leave those whiskers till that last layer. Now whiskers and using the pastel pencils to create long but really fine lines can be very challenging and I do find there's a specific way that you can move the pencil down to the length of the lead, where you should hold that pencil and so on. There is also a rolling technique that you can use with the pencil and that helps to create some really fine lines. If you would like to see that technique, I do have the whisker part of this portrait all in real time up on my Patreon channel. But the biggest tip when drawing any fur, whiskers, anything like that, is fur length, fur direction and fur thickness. Those three things are really going to help to make that fur realistic. Try not to worry about the exact colour as much as your contrast. Now that being said of course, the colour is important, but I do think if you get sent 5-10 to 10 photos of that one animal that you've been asked to draw, I can guarantee that the colour of the fur of that animal will look different from photo to photo. There are so many things that impact that. The light source, the time of day, whether or not it was taken inside under artificial light or outside in natural light. Was it a cloudy day? Was it sunny? You know, there are so many different things that affect the colour of the fur, but it's the contrast that's going to stand out more. And again, because that's an area that I know we worry about, I do speak about that in the real-time tutorials on Patreon. I show you how to mix your pan pastels to get more of the colour that we're looking at in the reference photo, but really focusing on how to identify that colour. That's important, whether or not it is a warm colour or a cool colour. 
So after I've added those details, I will then take a step back from the easel, I'll put the portrait away for a day and then look at it again one final time with fresh eyes. If there's nothing that I see that I want to change, I call it finished. So here is the photo of that finished portrait. I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video are useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions, pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week.